Hello everyone. Today we'll be discussing a very interesting topic about how to answer IGCSE physics experiments. This is the topic that I see a lot of students struggle a lot all around the world. But before that, I have a small gift for you. I have compiled all the frequently asked questions in IGCSE physics along with the answers and explanations and it has been updated and perfectly suited for the 2025 session. The PDF download link is in the description. Now, today we'll be looking at an investigation on how different surfaces emit different amounts of infrared radiation. And this is the experimental setup. So I have a Leslie's cube and it has four surfaces, four different types of surfaces. One is matte black, one is matte white, one is shiny silver, the other one is shiny black. It's placed on a heat proof mat and there is an infrared detector that will detect the infrared radiation being emitted from the sites. So in any experiments, there are three types of variables dependent variable, independent variable, and control variable. And this is where students struggle the most, identifying which one is the dependent variable, which one is the independent variable, and finally, which one is the control variable. So let me just give you some insight. Dependent variable depends on another variable. That's why it is called dependent and the one on which it depends is called the independent. Now, control variable is the st most straightforward. This is the one that is kept constant throughout the entire experiment, right? So, control variable is kept constant throughout the entire experiment, right? So, for this specific context, let's identify what are the dependent variable, independent variable, and the control variable. So the dependent variable would be the detector reading because this reading depends on the surface it's being pointed at, right? So the detector reading is the dependent variable. And what does it depend on? It depends on the type of surface. So type of surface becomes my independent variable. And throughout the entire experiment, to make it a valid test, to make it a fair test, you have to keep something constant. What do you keep constant? The control variable. And what is the control variable in this specific scenario? It is the distance between the cube and the detector because you only want the type of surface to affect my reading, right? Meter reading. And if you change the distance, the meter reading will change. So there is no way for you to identify what is it that's causing the change in the reading, whether it's the type of surface or whether it's the distance. So if the distance can affect the reading, it has to be kept constant. Something that can affect my dependent variable other than the independent variable has to be kept constant. So this is the basic idea. Now, let's take a look at the description of the method. How do you exactly set the whole thing up? First, you fill the Leslie's cube with boiling water. Then measure the distance between the detector and the cube with a meter rule. Measure the intensity of radiation from one surface. Then repeat for other surfaces. And you have to throw it in that while taking measurements, the distance between the cube and the detector is kept constant at all times. This is an investigation. In other words, in an, it's an experiment, right? So what do we do? Why do we perform an experiment to determine the relationship between two quantities? So here, we want to establish the relationship between um, the type of surface and the amount of radiation they emit, right? So what is the best way to see a relationship between two quantities? It is, of course, a graph. So that's why you plot a graph of detected reading against type of surface. Now comes another very important piece of idea. Look at the graph that we are drawing. So we have detector reading against type of surface, but 
we have a bar chart. Why are we using a bar chart? At, and uh, let's keep that aside for a while. Let's identify which of these is the best emitter of infrared radiation. You can see the matte black emits the most amount of radiation. So that is the best emitter. Then comes shiny black, then matte white, and finally shiny white is the worst <laughs> at emitting infrared radiation. Now you need to also identify why are we using a bar chart? That is also a very common question. Let's identify. Why a bar chart, right? So line graphs are drawn, drawn for continuous variables. In this investigation, the type of surface is a discrete or discontinuous variable. So this is the bit where students struggle the most, right? So what is a discrete or a discontinuous variable? See, you have matte black, you have matte white. You don't have anything in between. You have matte white and shiny black. You don't have anything in between, right? So the type of surface don't have a continuous uh, set of values, right? So they have only fixed and certain and particular values, right? So that's what makes them discrete, not continuous, right? But when to draw a line graph? Let's say I have the same less this cube uh, filled with hot water and I place a thermometer inside it. And I want to see how the temperature of the less this cube or in other terms, the water inside the less this cube changes with time, right? So what graph do we draw? Do we also draw a bar chart here? Absolutely not. This is the graph that we draw, temperature versus time graph, right? Because for both the quantities, right, both the variables, these are continuous variables. So you can have any values of temperature. So you have 10, 30, these are the divisions, right? So you can have somewhere in between 15. And for 30 and 50, you can have some values in between 30 and 50 as well, right? So you have a continuous set of data. And when the data is continuous, you always draw a line graph. And you might be wondering, wait a second, this doesn't look like a line. This looks like a curve. A curve is also a line. That's why we use an adjective straight line. So line can be both straight as well as curved. And for IGCSE physics, we mostly refer to this as a curve of best fit. But you can definitely call this a line graph, right? and not a bar chart. Now, if you found this video useful, you'll find the other two videos even more useful. I have compiled almost everything that you need to know at the last moment as preparation for your exam. And I call this the last minute revision tip videos for both paper one and paper two, and the download link are given in the description below. Thanks for watching and good luck with your exams.